Hey there, everybody. This is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today, we're going to be talking about sprockets. We're going to answer all your questions about sprockets, chains, how to change them, how to know they're worn, etc. All in this one video. So stay tuned. We get a lot of questions about sprockets, whether it be a front sprocket like this one, or this goes on like a 350, 360, or 450, or a rear sprocket like this. I think this one's for a 350. I can't tell off the top of my head. Uh, anyway, there's lots of questions about sprockets, when I need to change them, how to change them, and how they coordinate to the chain, and also like what chain length do I need if I change my sprocket ratios and vice versa. So we're gonna try to clear some of that up for you right now. And we're gonna first talk about the front sprocket. So first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the front sprockets here. And in this hand, I have a front sprocket for 350, 450, 360 right here. And in this hand, I do have a sprocket for one of the four cylinders, a 550 or a 750. And they have a little bit of visual difference to them that there is this kind of raised lip here. Uh, something to know about the uh, front sprockets is they are generally made out of a harder steel than the rear sprockets. However, they do wear out first because, well, they rotate more because they have a higher ratio as they turn. So if you see one wear out, it's usually gonna be the front sprocket. But something to note is oftentimes you can take the sprocket and reverse it. So depending on how the teeth have worn on the sprocket, sometimes you can flip the sprocket over and get a little bit more life on it. At least that's true with the, the Honda sprockets. Now other bikes are different depending on how the sprocket's designed, but these you have a little bit of service life by flipping over the front sprocket. Now looking at the rear sprockets, they're obviously you know, larger, but the sprockets are made of a lot softer steel. And this is the driven sprocket, meaning it's being the one the chain pulls and drives the back wheel. And they don't seem to wear out quite as fast, but they do wear. And if you're not sure about it, you know, it's always a good idea to change both the front and rears together along with a new chain, but uh, they are a softer steel. Now on the, the rear Honda sprockets, they are not reversible by any means. They're one direction only, so you can't quite get as much life out of them, but generally they last a bit longer than most people think. They're, they're actually pretty tough, especially if you don't ride the bike hard, you keep your chain lube and well adjusted. So uh, that's what helps preserve sprocket life is actually how well you take care of your chain. For those of y'all who have a 450 or a 500T, we want to show you a couple of details on the sprockets that don't apply to the other bikes, but only apply to these bikes right here. So in front of me, I have what we call our A and B 450 sprocket. Other than the color difference, which really makes no, no uh, effect of performance, uh, there is a, a machine difference on the sprocket as far as how it fits onto the hub and how it fits into these studs right here. Just as a, a point of clarity, typically this wire, wider width sprocket here is found on the earlier 450s and the narrower or more narrow lip here is on the later 450s. Now, as far as when they, they made the change, it's hard to say, uh, kind of in the middle of the production run. So if you have an earlier bike, like a 68 or 69, 70, it's probably gonna be this style. If you have like a 72, 73, 74, you're gonna be kind of in this neighborhood. But uh, it's gonna be important just to take a good look at each one you have on your bike to figure out which one do you need. But let's talk about what changing each sprocket does to how the bike feels and it performs. We're gonna start with the front sprocket right here. And I'm gonna use our example right here. This is, would be a 360 setup typically where we have a 16 tooth sprocket in the front and a 32, 34 tooth sprocket in the rear. That was the factory ratios here. And the factory chain length would have been 94 length. Now, if we take this front sprocket and we go bigger, let's say we go to a 17 tooth, so we've increased its size. What's gonna happen is the bike's gonna have more top end speed and less off the line from a stop, get up and go. 
The opposite happens if we go smaller with the sprocket. If we put a 15 tooth on, the bike's gonna have a little bit more off the line acceleration, but your top speed suffers. Depending on how you're riding and where you're riding, that's gonna make a difference of how the bike performs. If you're on the flats, you can probably run like a 17 tooth up front. If you're on a hilly area, maybe you wanna run a 15 tooth. Now changing that front sprocket is gonna be the fastest, easiest, and cheapest way to get you a different seat of the pants feeling on the bike um, as far as you make the change and you feel the, the difference in how the bike performs. Now the same thing is true for the rear sprocket, but it kind of works in the reverse. Whereas the larger diameter you go in the rear, the more off of the line acceleration you're gonna get and less top speed. You're gonna go to a lower gear ratio. The opposite is true if you go to a smaller diameter in the back. If you went smaller diameter, you're gonna get more top speed and less off the line acceleration. Now it's always a balancing act between the front and rear. And sometimes people wanna mix them all up and they don't really know what that means as far as the ratios go. So this is where we get into a little bit of math. So when it comes to figuring out the sprocket ratio, we're trying to figure out how many times does the front sprocket turn in comparison to the rear sprocket. But the front always turns faster because it's smaller and the rear turns slower. What you do is you take that rear tooth number, in this case for the 360, it's a 34 tooth, and I divide it by the front number is 16. And that gives me a ratio of 2.125 as the, the ratio. So basically, for every 2.125 revolutions of the front sprocket, the rear sprocket makes one full revolution, okay? Now, if we change that ratio, let's say we go from a 34 tooth in the back to a 38 tooth in the back. We, you know, we've added four teeth to the ratio, and then as we divide 38 now by 16, it changes our gear ratio to 2.375, so we have a much lower ratio. So coming back to our 360 example here, um, I have laid out our 16 tooth front and our 32 four tooth in the back. And we hypothetically have a 94 link chain that connects them together. That ratio, again, 34 divided by 16 is 2.125. So that's 2.125 revolutions of that sprocket for one revolution here. We start mixing it up. We get rid of that 16 because we said we want a little more top end and we throw out 17 up front. But then out back, we get rid of the 34 and we put a 36 in here, all right? So what's changed here? We now have two more teeth in the back. We've added a longer chain, which is more mass and more weight, but our ratios are almost the same. If we divide 36 by 17, the math works out to 2.117 which is really close to 2.125. It's a very small difference as far as the gear ratio between these two, which almost would be negligible to feel when you're riding the bike. There could be some, but it's gonna be very small. So the question is, would a swap like this be worthwhile? In my opinion, probably not. So before you decide to start swapping sprockets, do a little math and figure out which direction do you wanna go. I know we just did a bunch of math and calculations, and I know it can be a little bit confusing, so let's just remember a few things. If your front sprocket is made smaller or your back sprocket made larger, you're gonna have more low end torque, which means the bike is gonna wanna pull harder from stop through acceleration, but it compromises top end speed. If your front sprocket is larger or your rear sprocket is smaller, you're gonna get more top end speed out of the bike and you're gonna compromise that acceleration from a stop uh, to going. Just remember, whatever change you make is gonna shift how the bike rides one direction or another. Whether it's gonna be more acceleration and torque off the line, or you're gonna to try to go for more top end speed while you're in your final year cruising down the road. One of the most common questions that we get referring to sprockets and chain is what length chain do I need based on the sprocket tooth count that I have on my bike? Now granted, if your bike is stock, we do have all the chain links listed on the website based on the stock front and rear number ratios. And that's gonna be our base point to figuring out how we need to change the chain length based on the sprocket change. In order to figure out what length chain you might need, we're gonna do an example here based on a ratio that we know and a chain length that we know already on a stock bike. So in our example, we're looking at a 360s setup. And the 360 has a 16 tooth up front and a 34 tooth in the back. 
Now, let's say we change the rear sprocket. So, I'm gonna take out the 34 tooth. I'm gonna pop in a 36 tooth. So we have added two more teeth to the sprocket in the back. Therefore, our chain needs to be two links longer. So we're gonna go from a 94 to a 96 link chain. In this last example, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. We start off with our 34, 16 ratio on our 94 link chain. We're gonna change the rear out to that 36 tooth rear we're talking about. But then we're gonna change the front out from a 16 to a 17. So we've added two in the back and one in the front. So you could say, well, that's three teeth. Does that mean do I add two links or four links? And the question is, well, it's hard to know because it's based on how much travel your back wheel has in the swing arm. If you have enough travel on the shorter length chain, it's okay to run it. If you don't have enough travel, you're gonna to need to go with a longer chain. If you're not sure, I would err on the longer side because you can always cut the chain if it's too long. So we start off with a 94, we added two, 96, we added one here, it would be 97. So let's go ahead and round up to 98 and start there. And if we have to short to 96 later, we can do that once it's on the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the rear sprocket back on the wheel real quick. Uh, just so you all know, we do have sprockets available in both silver, silver and gold for your bike. It doesn't really matter which color. It's a kind of more of a personal preference. I want to put the silver back on this bike, so I'll put the gold aside. I'm going to start reassembling the studs into the actual sprocket here. So on the 360, the, the studs themselves don't have a retaining plate. On some other bikes, 350s, 450s, there was like a, a plate with little bend up tabs to keep the nuts from backing off. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads here, and I'm gonna torque the bolts on them down to between 45 and 50 foot pounds. I'll probably go like 47 on the wrench, but just so you know, every bike's different, so make sure you look up in the service manual uh, what the torque value is, and if you don't have a retaining plate, use some thread locker on those nuts there. All right, that's it. Rear sprocket's installed. This is ready to go back on the bike. I hope this video gives you a little bit more information about what it means to swap sprockets, whether it's on uh, 350, 360, 450, front and rear. Just so you know, the four cylinder bikes, like the 550 and the 750, use a very similar uh, sprocket layout, holding it on the rear hub type assembly. They are technically different, but if you can understand this one, uh, you should be able to translate over and get those ones done as well. Uh, of course, make sure you look up your torque values based on your bike, and if you need to use some thread locker on your uh, lock bolts, go ahead and do that. The front sprockets and all the bikes are done identically, so it doesn't really matter what model of bike you have, it's all kind of the same thing. This is Brendan with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you like us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel right here, and we'll see you next time. Basically, do you prefer Spacely Sprockets or Coswell Cogs?